Today's daf is Memchet. We're going to start at the bottom of Mem Zayin Amabet. Uh, from the words Amar of Yochanan, three lines from the bottom. Katana poreach mezamnim alav. If you have a young child who, or not exactly a young child, but someone who already has, okay, again, it's going to a little bit depend on the commentaries, what exactly the definition is, but we're going to go with the basic definition, which is a katan poreach is someone who has Two sa'arot, that's two hairs, meaning two pubic hairs, already a sign of maturity, but has not yet reached the age of 13. Okay, so in general, the question is how to treat someone like this. Usually they're treated like a katan because they haven't reached the age of mitzvah, but mizamnin alav. Okay, he can be part of a zimun. Tanya nami hachi, katan shevishte sa'arot mizamnin alav, vishaloi vishte sa'arot e mizamnin alav. Here we have a brighter which says, ah, it depends whether he has shte sa'arot or not. Um, okay, but we don't check. So now this sounds very strange. This seems to contradict itself. It sounds like, right, only if you have Shtei Sarot, that's the determining factor. Which sounds like, but we don't check. What don't we check? Well, we don't check to see if he has two pubic hairs or not. So the Gemara says, right, it sounds like, the contradict la tuye mai. So what is it coming to say when it says e medakta kim bekatan lav la tuye katan poreach? And then wouldn't that be saying it's to say we don't check, meaning we don't even allow. Um, we it's basically based on age, um, or sorry. So they say maybe this means. Um, look at Rashi she e medakta kim bo im bal lechlal shanim olo. In other words, then it would sound like we just don't check whether he reached 13 or not. Um, and then that's the, that's how they explain the contradiction. So they say, uh, it's not that they don't check for Sarot, it's that they don't check for um, age. Okay, which then proves again that we don't need age, it's enough to have Sarot. And that proves Rabbi Yochanan. Now we say, However, we don't hold this way. Okay, now you would think, based on what we, based on common practice, it sounds like we don't hold that way, we only go by age. But in fact, the Gemara says the opposite, which is, As soon as the Katan understands who God is, okay, now you might say, maybe that's never, but again, having a general concept, a basic concept of God, which we'll talk about in a minute, what that is exactly. So as soon as that happens, then already you can do, he can be part of a zimun. Okay. Now, interestingly, the and it, it's paskin this way in the halacha, but the Rama basically comes and says, right? He's the Ashkenazi commentary on the Shulchan Aruch that we shouldn't ho- that we don't hold this way, and we should um, we should. Anyone who does this, really, it's not right. Okay, he basically changes it, which is very interesting. I don't know why, but that's why we don't do this nowadays. Abai v'rava havu kayat v'kamei de Rava. Now we're going to have a story about Abai and Rava when they were children. Okay, they were sitting in front of Rava because Rava um, is the generation before them. If you remember, he adopted Abai. So they were sitting before Rava. Amar lehu Rava l'mi mevarchim. He says, who are we blessing? Amri le l'rachmana. They both said to God, where is God sitting? Rava looked up at the ceiling. He went outside. He pointed toward the heavens. Rava said to the two of them, Both of you are, are headed for leadership. You're both going to be rabbis when you get older. Um, or Talmidei Chachamim. This is a very famous uh, uh, quip, people would say, a uh, famous expression that people say each, um, all the gourds are, you can already tell from when it starts growing, which are going to be good and which are not going to be good. And like the, you know, exactly like this, the Chachamim, it was known already from their young age that they were going to, that they were destined for greatness. Um, you can think about the difference, why you know, Rava looked up at the, at the ceiling and Abaye kind of looked outside and went outside and looked at the heavens. There's a difference between those two answers. Um, Rava seems satisfied with both, but anyway, food for thought. Amarav Yehuda B'Rei Dorav Shmuel Bar Shilat Nishmei Darav. Tishach Lutagan Ve'echad Achal Yerek. Mitzarfin. 
Okay, if 10 people ate bread or something made from grains and one, you know, some sort of bread made from grains and one ate vegetables or legumes, they're part of the zimun. Amar Rabbi Zera, Bamina, meaning they can count for 10 for saying Shem Hashem. There's actually an interesting debate here about whether you would say the same thing for two and one, right? It's nine and at the tenth, yes, the tenth can count. The question is, would it also count for if two people ate dagan and one ate vegetables or legumes, would that count, right? Legumes that are bori priya dama. Amar Rabbi Zera, Bami Nami Rav Yosef, me Rav Yehuda. Shmone mahu, shiva mahu, amar le, loshna. He says, yeah, that's also fine, as long as you have a majority. But shisha vaday lo But six, I'm definitely, you know, we're definitely not asking about because, um, you know, the assumption here is that six already is not enough of a majority. In other words, you need nine and one or eight and two or seven and three, but not six and four. Amalei Rabbi Yirmiya, shapir avadet lo it was good you didn't ask about six. Hatam tama maidi karuba hachanami karuba. I understand why you didn't ask about six because if seven and three work, then six and four will also work because they're both a majority. Now Rabbi Zero didn't seem to actually be saying that, and now we're going to explain. Ve'iu savar ruba de min karbina. You need a rov hanikar. You need a majority that's identifiable, and that's why six and four is not enough of a majority. Now we get a story. Yanai malka umalkata krichu rifta bahade hadade. They were eating bre- eating their bread together. Umi dekata lehula rabbanan. Okay, now if you remember the famous story of Yana Amelech, so he killed all the rabbis. Okay, what was the story? You can see Rashi says in Masechet Kiddushin and Dach Samachav, the Chachamim came and they tried to say he wasn't a Kohen. Okay, he was both the king of the Cheshmonaim and was a Kohen, Kohen Gadol, and he. Um, they tried to say your yichus isn't good and you shouldn't be a kohen, and he basically killed all the rabbis. So now he's sitting eating with his wife, and he says, "Since I killed all the rabbis, lo inish levuruchelchu. I have no rabbis to bench for me." Okay, he sounds like he doesn't really know how to bench by himself. He needed a talmid chacham to come and bench for him, but he had nobody, so now he was stuck. So he says to his wife, right? They always go to the wife when they're struggling. Who, how, where am I going to get a guy who's going to make a, a big Brakat Amazon for us? It's interesting. He was so concerned about Brakat Amazon if he wasn't concerned about killing people. Promise me if I bring you someone, you won't torture them. So Ishtibala, he swore to her. So she brings her brother, who lo and behold is Shimon ben Shetach. Okay, he was the head of the Sanhedrin, and she basically hid him when he killed all the other people. And she now went to when he killed all the rabbis, and she now went to get him out of his hiding space place. So he puts he puts Shimon ben Shetach in a very respectful place, right in between him and the queen. Did you see how much respect I'm treating you with? It's not you who's providing me with respect. It's the Torah that provides me with respect. You're like, thank you for your respect, but no thanks. Okay, you should... You should exalt the Torah and it will lift you up and you should respect it and then it will hug you. Amar la, so Yana Amelech doesn't like this. Yana says to the queen, Kachazit de kabel marut. Don't you see they're not accepting my authority, right? This is he's kind of justifying why I killed all the rabbis. Yave le kasa So they bring him a cup to Benchan. Amar, hechi averuch. He says, how am I going to make a bracha? Baruch shachal yanai v'chaverav mishalo. What's the problem? He says, you haven't even given me anything to eat. How can I possibly do a zimum for you? What, I'm supposed to say, blessed is Yana and his friends who ate? I didn't do anything. How am I going to say this? So, so he drank the cup that they brought him to Benchan. And they brought him another cup. And he blessed on that. Now, what do you see? You see that he made a bracha. He did the zimun, even though all he had was wine. He did it 
only according to his own opinion. But not, it wasn't, it was his own thing. It wasn't the rabbis said he could do this. Okay, so here we have it. You can't, you can't be the one leading the zimun unless you ate a kezayit of, of uh, grains. Now you could be part of the zimun, but you can't, as we saw before, even with the yerek, but you, although even there it wasn't clear if you needed 10, um, but you can't lead the zimun. So he basically did his own thing. So now you have to wonder, maybe he did it because he was worried about his life. In other words, it was clear they weren't giving him any other food. And, you know, he, maybe that's why. Okay, so now we're going back to um, what we said about the... Uh, that you can't be motzi others unless you ate a kazayat tagan. So here it says, even if you had just a little bit of, of sauce, or you had one date, uh, sorry, one fig, that's enough. You can be mitzdarif. So the Gemara says, no, 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 you're not paying attention. It's dirufe mitzdarif. Yes, you can join them. Okay, you can only do it if you ate a kazayat of grains. It was also said, Amrav Khanabar Yehuda Mishmei Derava. So now they say not only is that our suggested answer, but that actually was said by by Rav Chana Bar Yehuda Mishmei De Rava. And I'm Rav Chana Bar Yehuda Mishmei De Rava. Hilchata achal ale yerek v'shata kosher yaya mitzdarev. You could be part of the zimun, right? If you ate uh, a leaf of a, of a vegetable or a cup of wine. You can be part of it, but that in fact is the halacha. In order to be motzi, you have to eat a kazayit of grains. Amar Rav Nachman. Now we're going to talk about Berkat Amazon. Mosheti ken Yisrael Berkat Azan b'sha'ash yarad lahem man. When the mom is coming down, that's when Moshe instituted the first blessing of Berkat Amazon. Okay, we're now going to have, according to the Gemara, a history lesson again, whether you view this as historical or not, a separate question, but kind of say when the different blessings of Berkat Amazon came about. Um, so the first one, Berkat Azan, was in the man when they got sustenance, basically. That's why Berkat Azan is about sustenance. Yoshua tekein lem Berkat Haaretz, keivan shenechnesu laaretz. Ah, the land and the Mazon coming from the land. Well, that was Yoshua when they got to the land. David u'shlomo teknu bonei Yerushalayim, because they both built up Jerusalem, right? David built up the city, and Shlomo built the Beit HaMikdash. So now they're going to say, well, which part did each one it did each one establish because David didn't actually build the Beit HaMikdash. So David tikein al Yisrael amecha va'al Yerushalayim irecha, right? Yerushalayim is the center. Ushlomo tikein, or the capital, ushlomo tikein al abayat ha-kadol va-kadosh. The part about the Beit HaMikdash, he instituted that. Hatov ha-mitiv b'yavne tiknua. The bracha of hatov ha-mitiv, that God does good for us. And that's a way of kind of dealing with things that are tough and saying, well, everything's looked at as good. Against the people of Betar. Okay, the people of Betar was um, uh, at the beginning of the rebellion of Bar Kokhva in the time of Hadrian, the emperor. So these were a bunch of rebels and the Romans came and killed hundreds or thousands of people, according to the Masoret, and they didn't allow them to bury the people. So Rabban Gamliel and his, and his people in Yavne basically sat and fasted for many days and Rabban Gamliel spent a lot of his money to basically get permission to bury them. So they instituted this blessing. We'll read it now. On the day that they allowed them to be buried, The first thing we said, Hatov, right? God does good things, was because all the bodies didn't reek, right? Even though they were left not buried. And that was a miracle. And the second was that they allowed them to bury them. Tanu Rabbanan. Seder Berkat Amazon Kachi. Okay, here's the order of Berkat Amazon. Berkat Amazon. 
שנייה, ברכת הארץ, שלישי, בונה ירושלים, רביעית, התל והמיטיב. Right, this is again, in those days, they gave people guidelines, right? It wasn't necessarily clear they had an exact text, although you see that some of the words, right, they say exactly, Al Yerushalayim Yerecha, Ba'al Abayit HaGadol HaKadosh, actually match our text. But here they're telling you this is the content of each bracha. U b'Shabbat, matchil b'Nechama, u m'sayim b'Nechama, v'omer k'dushat hayom b'Emtza. Okay, the Nechama is the third blessing, because Rachem, okay, it's like about Nechama, about the future, also about Yerushalayim being built up, like Nevoot Nechama. Um, so you start with that, you end with that, and you say the paragraph about Shabbat, right, in the middle of that. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Ratzala Omra b'Nechama Omra. Bebrakat ha'aretz Omra. You could also add it in the third blessing if you wanted. Bebracha shetignu chachamim b'Yavne Omra. You could even say it in the bracha that the chachamim instituted in Yavne. V'chachamim omrim, Eina Omra, Ela b'Nechama b'Vad. No, you have to say it specifically in that place. So now the Gemara says, Chachamim, Hanu Tanakama. Wait a minute. Didn't, isn't that the same as the first opinion that you have to say it in Nechama? So they say, Ika b'Nayu di'Avad. If b'Di'Avad, you did it in a different blessing, according to Tanakama, that would be okay. According to Chachamim, they say very clearly, you cannot say it only in the third, uh, the third blessing. By the way, you see here that the three blessings were more, okay, this is, comes up in other places, the three blessings are from the Torah, and the fourth bracha, because it was only instituted in Yavne, that fourth blessing is only Durabana. Okay, when we talk about Prakat Amazonas Doraita, really it's the first three blessings, and the fourth one is Durabana level. Tanu Rabbanan, minayin lebrachat hamazon min haTorah. Okay, dafka on that topic. How do we know the brachat hamazon is mita oraita? Shneemar vaachalta vesavata uveirachta. Okay, so now they're going to darshan from here. All the brachot that we said that are oraita uveirachta zobrachat hazan et Hashem alokecha. Okay, vaachalta vesavata uveirachta et Hashem alokecha. I'm just going to read you the rest of the pasuk. Al aaret haTovah sher natan lach. Okay, for the great land that He gave you. So et Hashem alokecha. Zober kata zimun. Okay, Tashem alokecha means you have to bless in the name of God. That's the zimun that we say. Nevarech shachalnu, right? Nevarech, and then we use Shem Hashem alokenu shachalnu mishelo. Um, so that's mentioning the Hashem's name. Al aaret zober kata aaret hatova zober de Yerushalayim. How do we know where Yerushalayim is hatova? Shne v'chenu omer ha'har hatova zeva halvanon. Okay, because the, and that's a reference to the Beit Hamikdash. Okay, this is in Sefer Dvarim, Pasuk Gimel, it says, Abrana ve'ere'et ha'aretz ha'tovah asher ba'ever ha'yarden, ha'har ha'tov hazeh v'halavanon. And they say that that's a reference to Yerushalayim. Um, okay, so there you see the tov, right? So ala aretz, Hashem lukecha, ala aretz ha'tovah, aretz is perkada aretz, ha'tovah b'nei Yerushalayim, asher natan lach, zo ha'tov ha'mitiv. Okay, here they even have a reference, even though they, they're metaken in Yavne, they give a reference for that also in the Torah that God gave you. And it's, again, God gives us good things. Um, now, according to this, the truth is, I actually said that, but it's not actually accurate. According to this, this Brayta, that bracha is actually Midoraita, and it wasn't instituted in the time of Yavne. Okay, so according to this, it's actually part of the Doraita Chiyuv. So this only tells us that we have to make a bracha after, right? Didn't we have a whole page on this earlier, remember? So how do we know before? Okay, now interesting, they bring the kavachomer. They don't bring the conclusion there that it was svarahi, although this is also svara. But kishu saveh mevarech, kishu ra'ev lo kol shakem, right? That complicated kavachomer, which one could easily kind of reject, which is, well, if you're going to bless God when you're satiated, well, the more so you should bless God when you're hungry. And again, the fact that God can, if the logic is, when you're hungry, you're so anxious to eat and you're really appreciative that you're getting the food. And that's all the more so reason to thank God. Now, one might claim otherwise. What do you mean? No, you haven't even eaten yet, right? You only want to thank God when you're satiated. And that's actually the content of the puzzle. But one could make the argument, as I just did, which is, well, you know, you're so hungry and you want to eat, all the more so, that's the time to start blessing God. Rava Omer, Eino Tzarich. Uh, sorry, Rebbe Omer, this, we're still in the bright Rebi Rebbe says, Eino Tzarich. You don't need to learn this from a Kavach Omer, because you can actually learn it from the Pasuk itself. Okay, we're now going to have a slew of different 
explanations of that last verse, of the last uh, part. Sorry, he's saying, actually, his argument right now is about the Birkata Zimun, the first thing he differs on. And he says, um, we'll see, he disagrees about a few things. But the first thing is Birkata Zimun. He says, we don't learn that from a Tashem Elokecha. We learn it from Migadlu Lashemiti, Nafka. Okay, we learn it from, you're supposed to bless the name of God, right? Gadlu Lashemiti, Unaromimash Moyachdav. And that's the source that we saw for Zimun already on Daf Memhe. Okay, so he's saying we don't get it from here. We get the Zimun from Galul Shemiti as we saw in Memhe. Ala Aretz, Zoberkata Aretz. Okay, that is the same thing. Hatova, Zobone Yerushalayim, also the same. Vechein Omer, Haha, Hatova, Zeva Halvanon, right, as we proved about Bone Yerushalayim. Hatova, Miti, Biyavne, Tiknua. That's against the first Tana who thought it comes from Asher Natanach. Ah, now Asher Natan Lach is free. So what does he teach for? Misha Natan Lach teaches you when you get it, that's when you're supposed to bless. Okay, third opinion. Rabbi Yitzchak Omer, Eino Tzarich. Okay, you don't need. Okay, you can follow along in the sheet also. It's charted out there. Harehu Omer, Uvarach et Lachmecha ve'et Memecha. Al tikrei Uvarach, ela Uvarech. Ve'matai kari lechem. Okay, so now what do we have here? Okay, he says, now he's disagreeing just about the last verse. You don't need Asher Natalach, and you don't need the Kav Chomer. He says, it says that, that God blesses Lachmecha Umeimecha. So don't read Uverach, read Uvarech. You should bless your Lechem and your Mayim. And when is it called Lechem? Well, it's called lechem before you eat it. After you eat it, it's already in your body. We don't call it bread anymore. Okay, so from there we see um, what, what uh, from there we see that you have to make a blessing before. I'll just read you the whole verse so you see it in context. It says here, um, Now the pshat there is, if you worship God, then God will bless your bread and your water and will take away disease from among you. But the way they read it is, Rabbi Yitzchak reads it is, you should worship God. And in that context, you should bless your bread and your water, and then God will take away uh, sickness. Okay. Fourth opinion, Rabbi Natan Omer, no, no, you don't need to learn it any of these ways. Harei Omer, okay, this is in Sefer Shmuel, Kivoachem ha'ir kein timsunoto, okay, this is with Shaul HaMelech, he's trying to, um, the, in the story, in the beginning of Sefer Shmuel, Shaul is trying to find his father's donkeys, and he looks, he says, he, he's looking for the Navi. So it says, Right, he's, uh, he's told that when you get to the city, you'll find him right before you go to the Bama to eat, to the, this area to eat. Okay, so what do you see here? He blesses the Zevach and then the people eat. So what do you see? Ah, you make a bracha before. Now this all, certainly isn't from the Torah, it's from the Nevi'im. But he says, you see a reference here. So they say, the kokach lama, why did, now these are these girls that were answering him, okay, they gave him this whole, right? He asked, I want to see the, right now we're just on a tangent for a minute. Okay, so these, these Na'arot come out and they tell him how to find, right? He find or he, he sees these Na'arot, Yotzot Lishov Mayim, and he says to them, Hayesh Bezeharo'e, and then they answer them, him and they say this long answer, okay? So they say, why did, why did the women give him such a long answer? So they answer, because that's the way women are. They like to talk a lot, okay? I don't know what the purpose of telling you this is, but it's just a, kind of like a funny line. Ushmuel Amar. He says, what do you mean? No, the reason they said so much was they were talking so long is because they were interested in looking at Shaul. Right? It says he was, he was a very tall, you know, obviously good looking guy. And, and basically they were, they wanted to engage in conversation with him because they wanted to look at him. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, third answer, There's a time for everything, and this was, this whole story happened right before, and it was the, the prelude or the, the story in which Shaul gets anointed to be the king, and basically they needed to, the, 
they needed to, um, it was God's way of helping buy time because it wasn't yet Shmuel's time to end his rule. And therefore they needed a few extra minutes, right? Till the time came for the changeover to be, um, to happen. Okay. Um, maybe it also sounds like it was a way of, if you think about the story and it's, remember God was angry that the people wanted a king and maybe he just wanted to delay it a little bit. Right, We all know that when there's something that's impending and we're not really excited about it happening, we try as much as we can to push it off a little bit. So maybe that's also a different way of reading this answer of Rabbi Yochanan. So we understand you have to eat after benching. But what about making a blessing or also before we eat? What about making a blessing before we learn Torah? So I'm Rabbi Yishmael, Kav Chomer. Right, if we make a bracha on food, all the more so we should make a bracha on Divrei Torah, which brings us into the, the next world. You don't need the Kav Chomer. So what do you see here? Nitina is associated with food and Nitina is associated with the giving of the, the Torah, and therefore they're obviously compared. Now we're going to have a different Joshua, Sher Natalach. Rabbi Meir Omer, Minayin Kishakshem Shem Vrecha La Tova, Kach Mevrecha La Ra'a. How do you know we have to bless not only on the good but also on the bad? Tamud Lomar, Sher Natalach, Shem Elokecha. Tayanecha, Bechodin Shedancha, Bain Mida, sorry, Dayancha, Bechodin Shedancha, Bain Mida Tova, Bain Mida Shapuranut. Okay, God gives you everything and he gives you, he's the one who judges you with everything, whether it's with good or with bad, and therefore everything comes from God and we have to thank. Back to Berkata Torah. Okay, so we had two answers for Berkata Torah. One was, it's obvious if you're going to, if you're going to bless for mundane, you know, for food, which is bodily sustenance in this world, of course, you're going to do it for things that are, that bring you to Olam Abba. Second was, it's something that God gives us, and it's the, he gave us the Torah, and he gave us the Aretz, and we were blessing on both. Rabbi Yehuda ben Betecha Omer, Eino Tzarich, you don't need that. Harei Omer, Tova, Hatova. It says, Al Aretz Hatova. Why does it say Hatova? It could have just said Tova. Tova zo Torah. V'cheinu Omer, ki lekach tov natati lachem. Right, we say that in our davening when we put away the Torah. Tov is a reference to Torah there. There it's mentioned with the Hayyadiya. So in the word, and then basically he's saying the reference, and maybe that's why they brought it up here. The source for Berchot Torah is in this, the, the Psukim about Berchot Amazon. Okay, so it's very interesting to see here about the, um, about the comparison of learning and blessing before learning and blessing before eating. Interesting, they're actually talking about the blessing after eating, which, right, we don't make a bracha after learning Torah, we make a bracha before. Um, but it's this way of associating the two basic things in life, right? We have the, the food, which sustains us, and Torah, which sustains us in a different way. Um, and that's the, the obvious comparison here. Okay, we'll pick up tomorrow from the bright at the bottom of the page because it continues into tomorrow.